Hello, I'm Amanda V. Johnson, and you're watching Dash Detailed. A number of weeks ago for our Ask ABJ episode, a viewer sent in a question to the effect of, if Dash is so great, why is it only number seven in market cap? At the time, I provided an answer that most directly addressed Bitcoin's spot as the number one cryptocurrency, but as I thought about it afterward, I realized that the viewer was also, if not even more so, asking about slots two through six. So in an effort to more completely answer that question, because I've given it a great deal of thought myself, I wanted to provide you with some analysis today. So again, to restate the question, if Dash is so great, why is it only number seven in market cap? Well, as we all know, uh, and probably most, even maximalists will even admit, Bitcoin, of course, holds the number one spot due almost entirely to a first mover advantage in that everyone knows and readily admits that it doesn't offer any features or any benefits not found in any of its competitors. Rather, it has achieved the most network effect at the time due to a first mover advantage. But what about Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, Monero, and Ethereum Classic in spots two through six. Imagine with me, if you will, for a moment, that a very beautiful and vain and um, prideful sort of woman were to throw a ball, a party, and the only way that other females could make it through the door of this party is to assure her that she is the best, she is the highest, and they are of no real threat to her, are not competing with her in any way. This may sound like a silly little story, and you may be wondering what it's doing on Dash Detailed, but I think it's a fitting allegory for how the crypto sphere has worked thus far. See, of course, the very beautiful and popular and vain and prideful hostess is Bitcoin, and arriving at the doorstep in the number two spot is Ethereum. From the very beginning, Many, many Ethereum adherents have been adamant about saying, we have no interest in offering anything like a currency. Ether is to be used only as gas to fuel smart contracts. So fear not Bitcoin, we are not here attempting to be a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. And so Ethereum was led into the party. Then arrives Ripple at the number three spot, and Ripple is very clear about wanting to build a sort of property transfer backend for banking and financial institutions, not at all seeking to offer an end user product. Ripple is led into the party. Then comes Litecoin in the number four spot, and it has actually been a tagline within the at least a portion of the Litecoin community for years that Bitcoin is the gold and they are the silver. Naturally, Litecoin is led into the party. Then Monero arrives to the party in the number five spot, making it clear that they are targeting their product only to users who want the highest of privacy and who don't mind using things like command line interfaces because their product is targeted to the tech savvy and people who would never think of using something like a transparent blockchain like Bitcoins. Monero is led into the party. And then finally, Ethereum Classic in the number six spot has the same pitch as Ethereum, so is let into the party as well. And then Dash arrives and Dash makes the seeming faux pas of telling the hostess, hello, you are wonderful and you are beautiful, but I do believe that I am superior, that I have more to offer, and that I shall become more wonderful and beautiful than you, and I would like to consume your entire market cap and even surpass it. And how do I see this playing out? Again, another corny allegory, but that the, the thing that happens between Harry Potter and Voldemort in the last book, you know, the prophecy that says neither can live while the other survives, it's probably going to be something like that, honestly, because Bitcoin and Dash are basically competing for the exact same market, which is to be a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, or rather, Bitcoin used to be competing for that. They seem to be mostly confused about what they're going for now, which is why Dash is looking like a better and better bet every day. 
So I hope that analysis provides some sort of insight for you. Were you looking for it?、Uh, because it's a very valid question in these turbulent times of market caps. And as a final announcement, just what does it mean that? So much wealth in the crypto sphere is betting that certain digital currencies will become widely used by the average person one day in the future, but most of these digital currencies show no signs of moving toward average person usability. What does that mean economically? I plan to address that very topic in next week's show, where you will see the presentation I recently gave in Albuquerque, New Mexico, about bubbles forming in the crypto sphere. All right. See you then. Bye bye. And just how does Dash plan to offer peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash to the average person, like, hey, your mother? Check out this preview of Evolution and subscribe to this channel for fresh new content every Wednesday.